What's going on guys? Welcome back to Pure Evil MMA. I have a very special guest joining me here today. Another CT local here, Mike Kimball. What's going on, Mike? How are you doing today? Oh, I'm doing good. How are you doing? I'm doing awesome, man. It's so cool. I spoke with you, uh, you know, one of your really good friends, Jesse, and it's awesome seeing like Connecticut, like it really feels like the real is on the rise right now in Connecticut between you two guys and then, you know, Marissa. I mean, CT's hot right now. Who's Just Marissa? Uh, Marissa, the spider monkey, she trains over at Andrew Calandrelli's gym. <laughs> We're going to get into that because I actually have a question uh, a question for you. Maybe uh, maybe you can uh, get to the bottom of something for me. But coming off of your win, man, over at Bellator 194, I was cage side for that, man. And yeah. it, it was very special because you were on the main card. How did you get that fight? Like, what, what did Bellator approach you? How did this go down? So... A lot of people don't really know, but they actually offered me to make my pro debut like after my eight second knockout, which was my second amateur fight when I was fighting at 125. They offered me to fight, and I was just like, "Yeah, no thanks. It's my second amateur fight. Feel me? I wanna." Well, I remember Jesse did the same thing too, right? Like at Reality Fighting, they were like, "You want to come to Bellator and you put the brakes on?" Yeah. So I don't know. They must have saw something. Then, because that fight actually made it onto uh, the show Inside MMA with Boss Rutan. Hell yeah, yep. So they saw it from there. And um, my teammate Cap had fought for Bellator once, or twice maybe. And so they were in the area. I guess they were coming around. They called my coach. Hey, did you know Kimball turn pro yet? And he's like, well, he didn't, but he's ready to. So what's up? And they said, all right, we got a guy. And they, they offered me Jeff. And at first, I was just like, you know, coach, I know him personally. I, I don't really want to do that. Can they find somebody else? And then he was like, no, that's all they got. So I messaged Jeff. And I told him, you know, hey, I just want to let you know your name got brought to the table. I'm going to be honest. I said I didn't turn it down, but I just want to, you know, clarify with you. You know what I mean? Because, you know, at the end of the day, like I, I grew up watching him fight. I grew up. Um, I was like 15. We were sparring. Boxing. Jeffrey then, just to let everybody know who you're talking about. Yeah, Jeffrey then. So, I didn't, you know what I mean? Because I don't really want to have to, you know, do... But in a position like my... that, man, it's your future. And, I mean, not. it's a selfish sport. It's a selfish sport. Yeah, that's true. But, I mean, that's the thing. My People's mindset, their mindset is competition sport. When I'm in there, you know, the cameras and all that stuff, that's, that's, all, that's all the stuff that makes it seem all, you know... Yeah, sport and all the all the all the fake stuff, but the reality of it is, it's a fight, and I'm not in there trying to compete with you. You know what I mean? Here's so. the thing, though, you went in there and it couldn't have gone down any more perfect than how it played out. And just to let everybody know, in case you missed it, I uh, actually reposted it on my Instagram at Pure Evil. I made for everybody. It got like everyone on press row. Let me just set the scene for everybody. Everyone on press row, we're waiting for you know Bellator to really kick off in this main card. Here comes Mike Kimball coming down, and the hype behind you, man, like coming out the walkout music, everything was on point. Um, how, how did you feel coming out first off, uh, playing that walkout music, feeling the crowd, smelling, you know, beer and Vaseline? Like, what, what, how are you feeling? Well, um, to be honest, it was, I don't really get nervous before fights, but you, you get, you get a little feeling of something. But it's, that, it's crazy to say you don't, you don't feel some type of way. Yeah. Yeah, nah, but that fight, you know, they, they were warning me, you know, like Tom Egan, he obviously fought on the biggest stages, um, UFC. Conor McGregor, obviously, Tom Egan's boy. Con everybody knows Conor. Everybody want to fucking dick ride him now. But, um, so, with advice from them, they're just like, you know, be careful. You know, Tom tells me, be careful of the lights. You know, a lot of fighters that have fought on the scene, cap, they're like, yeah, it's so different. You know, the lights, the stage, blah, blah, blah. They're like, be careful. You know, just don't let that get to you. And so, I just kept in my head, like, why are they saying don't let it get to me if it's just another fight? And then, if anything, I felt... The, to describe how I felt walking out, you know, I felt the carpet and I looked around and I was just like, wow, you know what? Put my hand up like I'm here. I could be free, you know, basically no rules. Obviously, elbows, knees, everything's allowed that it's not I'm not packed in a fucking dog cage. So where these dudes could just grab me all fucking day. And then I just got it. Like, I just felt free and I warmed up in the cage uh, earlier that day, felt the cage out. And I was just like, man, this is, yeah, I think I, I, like, right then and there, I knew that this is what I was put on earth to do. Like, there was, nothing felt more right than 
fill in the cage and then that walk when I walk. My my music I always I always pick something to kind of just describe how I'm feeling at the time. So Meek Mill's lyrics <laughs> in in that song was just kind of what I was going through that camp what I was feeling, you know what I mean? So I just I just bring it with me. I just put everything on my back and just bring it. Let it go once I once I get in that cage and I put my arms up, I'm just letting it go. It's time to rock. And we saw that, man. Like as soon as the bell rang, you guys you know, tap, gave each other daps, and then you pushed forward. And man, when I saw you land that, that wow overhand, and he mm -hmm. dropped like that, like I stood up, like I immediately stood up, like shit was getting I, real. It was, oh, it was and, and, and then he grabs your arm, man, and I'm like, oh my god, like he could, he could do something with this. He, uh, I was like, Kimball's got to watch out. And then, he, like you went, like you went like this. You went, oh yeah, boom, power bombed him. And then the ref steps in. Went down within like ninety seconds, guys. It was it, it was lit. It was lit. I let you guys. I let you guys know a little secret. I kid you not. You could call Jesse up separately and ask him. I called that fight before the fight even happened. Like because I'm so honest with myself in training and preparation, and I've come to the maturity to where I can look look at the person I'm fighting or whatever and actually take what they're good at and not be ignorant towards it. Like, I don't give a fuck, blah, blah, blah. He's not doing nothing to me. I look at what they're good at and what they could do and I pick up on their habits and then I go out there and I just, I put it together. So I knew he covered high with his guard. I knew he's not really a wrestler. I don't really have to worry about the takedown, um, even though I was drilling the shit out of takedown defenses. But he's a Muay Thai fighter with, with really good jiu-jitsu. So I told Jesse and I told my team in the back, I was like, listen, I'm gonna crack him with a jab, and he's gonna be he's gonna be woo. And then I said, and he covers high with that guard, so if it's there, I'm just gonna let the one two go, and rip right around his guard, and he's gonna fall. If he's not stiff from the from the right hand, I'm gonna jump right on him. I'm jumping right on him. He's gonna throw up a triangle or or um a triangle or arm bar. And how do you feel? How, how do you feel the second he grabs your arm? I fed it to him. Yeah. You, you jumped right on top of him. You 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 were trying to finish the fight because because he dropped from that big overhand. And then as I'm hitting him, I could hear him breathing. So I knew he was out. And his body it looked like he was real scrambly, but he was literally like a limp. He was he was limp when I got on top of him. He he wasn't even really there. So I was just like, yeah, he's just this is just muscle memory playing. So I I knew what. I, so I'm sitting here and I'm hitting him and I feel him working for the arm. So I kind of put it in there. And it, if if you really watch the fight. He didn't even pop it up, and then, like, I had to try to escape. He literally popped it up, and before he even locked it, I, I trapped my arms like this. And that was, all, like, I've, I'm a very powerful, you know, individual, so I knew I knew he wasn't going to have the steam to pull that off, but I knew he was going to go for it. Triangle mm -hmm. bars is what all these dudes in Connecticut, that's all they go for, and I've learned that the hard way. <laughs> and, and you know what, let me, since you're talking about it, let me pull up your Instagram and just uh, play it for everybody really quick because it, it was so impressive. Now, let me see here. It's really quick. Display. There we go. All right, let's pull up your Instagram. And for everybody that wants to follow you on Instagram, it's at Mike or, or it's at Kimball Mike. Yes, sir. All right, let's see. Well, first off, before we even get to that, you keep talking about Jesse. I've had Jesse on the show mm -hmm. here. Um, and, and people are seeing like, and I was cracking up about it. I love this picture. I didn't know you guys go like way, way back. Like there's a picture of you guys like as, as little kids, uh, with Jesse's father. 13. Let's see here. Here it is. All right. Let me play this fight for everybody. All right. So check this out guys. Here it is. Drop some right here. So at this moment, you're trying to finish the fight. He's taking these deep breaths, and now he's about to grab your arm. He's trying to wrap you up with his feet. You get your arm. Your you, yeah, you feed him your arm, and then you just bail him on his head. Yeah. Finishes the fight, 358 of the uh, of the first round. At least that's what it said on the court. So going back there, man, you jump on top of the cage. You're feeling like a, that, that, that had to be such a good feeling. Yeah, I mean, I'm notorious for getting in trouble after the fights because I hop on the cage. They always yell at me, but at the end of the day, I'm the fighter. I make the fight. And if I just put somebody to sleep, and that's, like, every, it doesn't matter how good of a fighter you are. A lot of people don't even have knockouts. A lot of people never will know what it's like to put another man unconscious, and that's all I'm known for. 
have a hundred percent knockout rate. They got five the wins. Uh, that five wins via TKO so far. Boxing, I'm undefeated in kickboxing with all knockouts under a minute. So when I step, when I jump on the cage, I just that's just me saying I'm here and this is my cage. When I'm in this cage, this is my cage, and I don't care who's in the cage with me. Now, Mike, me, <laughs> my listeners have been hearing me talk about you since that fight. Ever since that fight, I've been talking about you. And then recently I had Harrison Bonfiglio on. Now, at some point in this interview, you knew I had to get to this part. What, what is the whole story behind this? Because, you know, I, I, I picked him up. I did like a podcast with him in the car. He shared the story of everything. I want to hear your side of everything. Everyone but, on the show has already heard his side. Let's hear yours. He was vague about things because he doesn't want to seem like the fucking dumbass that he is. So what happened was we had a fight. Um... And, and when was the fight? It was quite a while ago. Yeah, I don't know. I was like 19 or something like that. He put me in a triangle. First of all, all right, so the fight happens. We come out. I'm swinging. He's running. And he's jumping at my ankle like a woman. He's not even setting up shots. He's literally on the floor crawling to my feet like a little fucking girl. And the only takedowns he got was by pressing me on the cage. That's why I hate those little cages. Now it wouldn't matter. I, I, I've obviously worked, worked on things. I'm a complete martial artist in all areas truthfully but at the time you know i just wasn't ready for that cage that type of cage work or whatever so he didn't he didn't really like shoot on me and get a takedown he just like put me off the cage whatever we go to the ground he doesn't do anything the second round we come out same thing i rocked him with one hand and i like i got me tight because i skimmed him with the hand and he was he was wobbling i'm like oh i should have just landed it but um he put me in a triangle a mounted triangle a triangle into a mounted triangle and now I know how to get out of that because I'm a very flexible dude, no homo. I put my legs around around him and kick off. Literally, as soon as I put my legs around him, he goes like this, and the ref stopped the fight. And I'm like, whoa, whoa, wait, wait, what, 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 what do you mean? The ref stopped the fight. He went like what? He did what? He was about to... He did, he did two punches that I blocked like this, and not even hard punches. He was like this, literally. Like, you watch the vid, and I blocked him, and then I kicking the legs over and the ref just stops it and i'm like ref what are you doing and the ref goes the ref's exact words were you there's no way you were going to get out of that i said how are you going to tell me that one and then two as soon as it's over he goes to shake my hand he's like yeah my, my bad bro it should have went on longer like all respectful and shit like that then i go home or whatever the day after the, they post pictures or something it's ironic that the only pictures of him doing anything was with that triangle everything else is me punching him in his face so one and then people that I do not even know, like, I kid you not, I don't know these people, you know, they at, they're they tagging me and they're like, oh, that that was bullshit, the ref shouldn't stop the fight, blah, blah, blah. So he comes out of his face and he, he says, oh, somebody needs to tell that kid to take the loss like a man and stop stop crying. And I'm like, I, so then I got on and I'm like, listen, bro, I never said anything about the loss, a loss is a loss, I don't care about a loss, I got in there to get in there. I was like, so I don't know what you're talking about. And and then he was also saying to other people in that same sentence where he was like, he needs to stop crying, take a loss, blah, blah. He goes, I'll beat you anywhere. I'll beat you in boxing, kickboxing, doesn't matter. And first of all, that's a lie because you won't. Second of all, you won't beat me anywhere because every time I see you, you're looking down with your tail between your legs, you little fucking, fucking rat. He looks like a fucking weasel. Would you take a rematch with him? I mean, because this was your amateur career. A lot of the amateur, you're, you're supposed to be learning, you know what I mean? It's not like it. On, I'll fight anybody. I wouldn't have went pro if I'm not ready. to Listen, I don't spar with the best of the best. I'm around the best of the best. Nick is one of the best of the best. That whole camp is one of the best of the best. I'm in Boston with the best of the best. I'm at Joe Lozon's with the best of the best. I can beat any man they put in front of me. But one other thing that he likes to disguise is he cut down to 125 because he doesn't want to fight me. And I fought Justin Christie. And he keeps on bringing Justin Christie's name up whenever they bring up me and his name. Why do you keep talking about Justin Christie if you're talking about me and you? Because he doesn't want a rematch. He's scared to fight the rematch. That's why I fought Justin Christie in the first place, because he wouldn't take the fight. So he can say whatever he wants and act as tough as he wants. Me and Justin Valentin fought my first fight. Justin hit me with that same right hand that he got hit with, and I walked forward. He got hit and crumbled like a little girl and got out of there. So don't talk – don't – for me to even fight him would be – Retarded, but I'll tell you what I could do. We could fight. We don't got to fight in case. I'm not going to give him no clout, but we could fight for real, for real. You can get paid for it too, though, Mike. You can get That's paid for it as well. Especially, especially with some of this hype. Because here, let me just set the scene as well for, for everybody. Uh, Harrison, uh, he had a lot of, of hype behind him as well, like you were saying on, 
on Boss Root and Show and everything. And and uh, at, at this point, though, man, you have the platform advantage over at Bellator where you can kind of show a card to Scott Coker and be like, this is kind of the – that's how I feel. Um, and, and looking more at the big picture. Go on, go. Well, here's the big picture to me. I've never done anything to become a local legend. And all these guys in the area, all these names that you're speaking of, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Andrew Calandrelli, blah, 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 whatever. They're all local legends. No disrespect to Andrew Calandrelli. Anybody that has a gym or puts puts work into the sport of mixed martial arts has my respect. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, he's really a local legend too. He hasn't done anything. I'm not in here to stay in this fishbowl full of local legends. Yeah, yeah. Connecticut. I'm, I'm on the roster for a reason, to take people that are above me on that roster off so I could get that belt. So what I'm going to go backtrack for and fight fight these dudes to be a local legend? I don't care what they think about me. I don't care what they say about me. I feel that. I feel that. Look at that and look at where they are. They're, they're playing catch up. I'm, I'm, I'm focused on me and, and beating myself every day. Even when, I'm, when, even when I sign a paper to fight somebody, I'm not worried about them. I'm worried about what I'm going to do to beat me. Because if I, if I could beat me every day, who's going to beat me? Right now in your fishbowl, too, you got somebody like Dylan Dennis that is big on running his mouth. Uh, well, what do you think about Dylan Dennis, man? I think Dylan Dennis, um, because uh, he's in your fishbowl, man. And, l- and let me just set the record straight. He's 1-0 right now, and you are also 1-0 as a professional. Uh, do you think that, but that he's a different weight class. Yeah, he's. Yeah. What I think about him, though, I think, um, his jujitsu is honestly world class. Uh trash on the feet and you know he got he kind of got it i don't like to say anybody got it easy because i don't i don't want to make it seem like you know but at the same time he he's in he was in camp with mcgregor for his thing and he kind of had that name and i don't like fakeness like the way he talks his posture the, the, the words he says verbatim like he he's just he's milking mcgregor like he he i don't know the same i i He's going. He's going to run into some trouble if he fights real competition. Um, but I think Bellator will feed him guys. But he'll run into trouble if he fights real competition. I don't ever have to worry about that problem because all I've ever fought is real competition. Jeffrey's never been knocked out. He's only been beaten by Mirhab Davishi or whatever in the UFC, and he was he was at like ranked like number fourteen or something. Now he lost. He got down. But that dude couldn't even finish him. I come in here in my first fight and I put him out. And it's not like it was a lucky punch. I was I was baiting him. I was setting him up. So Dylan Dennis, fuck Dylan Dennis. I don't care about Dylan Dennis. Where are you at right now with Bellator? Like, what does your contract look like? Are they just doing like the one fight deal? Because at the beginning of the interview, I, you know, you, you wanted a, a sweet deal. You didn't want just one of these sell me tickets and maybe we'll put you at the end. You're like, I want to be on the main card. You're trying to work something out with a win. It gives you a little advantage. Well, so to be honest. I was gonna. I was trying to. I was turning down the Bellator fight so I could fight for CES in February. So I was just gonna go to CES, bang them out, get to the UFC. But because like obviously like it, it's about your skill. But it's also it has a little bit to do with connections, like and how you fight. Like people want to see people that put people out. So I got connections for for all these things. And then Bellator was knocking, and I told my coach like you know I want to fight for CES, blah blah. And Tom was the one who really sat me down and was like Mike, listen. Fight, fight the Bellator fight. I guarantee you, they're gonna offer you some sort of contract. I know how. I know what you're gonna do. Just, just, just get it done, and then take it from there. Because obviously, everybody has to. I have to acquire some sort of record. You know what I mean? So uh, he said, and I was like, you know, okay, I'll take the Bellator fight. It's one fight contract. And then sure enough, you know, now I got a six fight contract. I'm a, I'm a Bell. I'm a signed Bellator fighter. I'm about to get my check mark on IG. So I'm about to. Hell yeah. All the shorties. Um, <laughs> you know, not for nothing, I'm blessed. Now I'm signed to Paradigm Sports Management. Uh, with Tim and Austin, which is, you know, they got Wonder Boy on the roster. They got Michael Bisping. They got, you know, Conor McGregor. Everybody knows. They got they got some of the best. They have the best the best um, fighters in the world, world-class athletes. And, and I'm honored to be a part of that roster on one fight. You know, I can't, I can't complain. 
you're probably a good fit too for that because you're also a character like those people that you were just naming off like wonder boy like biz Bing. you know yeah. you were just talking about dylan danis and you can tell when somebody's rubbing off as phony someone like you know not not being themselves i go yeah. check out your instagram and 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 you're being yourself you're having fun and people like seeing that and the other big thing where i can tell that you're going to be going places is the energy that you bring uh like i'll be watching your instagram live or and i could just like see your energy like you'll put on a song and you just get you get you literally get tunnel vision you literally get like in a trance and a lot of people can't capture that energy especially day after day after day it's something that i, I really talk about a lot and something that you definitely hold yeah, I mean, I, I, don't, I don't know how to explain it. Jesse, Jesse be telling me all the time, he's like, it doesn't fucking make sense. Like, we'll just <laughs> we'll just be finished on our third session or something. And I'm like, if I feel like dancing, I'm going to dance. If I feel like going to the club, I'm going to the club. I, I don't know. I just, energy is something, something amazing. And I, I don't even, you know, you see who's on my neck. You know, they say, I'm, I'm a Christian. I'm not perfect, but they say, you know, the light of God is in all of us. And I feel like, you know, my light shines just a, a little, a little bright, and I got a good head on my shoulder. So I don't know. I just, I just be me. They say they be yourself, but some people aren't really themselves. Like when I tell you I'm myself, I'm literally, I'm just being me. And I guess people, people like, like people come to me all the time and they give me weird messages on Instagram like about inspiration, blah blah blah. And I don't understand it. I'm just doing what I love to do for myself to be the greatest and to provide a wealthy lavish life for my friends and family people family. need to see that too man it, it's very inspiring a lot of people on instagram like you say you know watch your story they tune into your fight they, they they see this character and they, it's very inspiring to them and like a big thing man is like you like looking through your own eyes like it, it, it's hard like to uh when you when you feel like a, a bad vibe around you just like somebody not understanding you like i feel like a lot of successful people can can sense that and they drift away um, you know, I, I, I can totally sense that with you, man. And you're just trying to head into the, the right direction and you're just living life, enjoying yourself. So the one thing that I really enjoy too, is that you're not afraid to, to go cross trained here and there. And like, what, what, what's your deal with that? Like what, what gyms have you been going to recently? It's funny because so many people from my first amateur fight, they, everybody bashed my gym. They bad mouth, they talk shit. They, they laughed at my coach. They laughed at my team. And they're like, oh, you got to get out of there, you're not going to be nothing, blah, blah, blah. Here I am, Thunder MMA, head coach Daniel Samarero. Here I am. You got Robert Beeman as well helping you, right? Yeah, boom. So what my training regimen is kind of like, um, my wrist just got back up to par. So I, I, go to, I go to FAA on a Monday for the wrestling class and then either Tuesday or Thursday for sparring. And um, we, we work, we go to class, and I spar with all those guys. You know, that's at FAA. Um, with, with Rob Beeman, PRT Fitness, Rob is like, he's like an X factor in my in my camp. You know, he, he'll he wake up, he, he done woke up and brought, like dragged me out the house, you know what I mean? Six in the morning, blah, blah, blah. We go to the gym. Um, we train, he puts us through a lot of fitness regimens and a lot of, um, a lot of, uh, a lot of scientific stuff. He, he, he's, he, if you look in his, you know, look at him, he'll always be reading some type of book. He's very, he's very in depth when it comes to the, the scientific aspect of working out. So he puts us through our workouts, you know, we'll have early sessions. We'll have 3 a.m. sessions, you know, things like that. I train with him at least once or twice a week. I train at my, my head gym two to three times a week. Um, do my stuff over there. And then every fight camp, or even if I'm not in fight camp, like right now, I'll be up in Boston probably mid-June just to go up there with Tom Egan and Kenny Kwan, uh, those guys up there, Rel, Cody, all those guys, um, Mau Mau, who's a world, you know, the Kamara dude, world jiu-jitsu champ. And we train, you know, I just, people look at gyms and they look at schools and they try to specify and they try to limit themselves by, by labeling themselves. And it's like, Team Thunder's my home gym, but I'm, I'm Mike Kimball. I'm I'm the savage. Feel me? So whoever whoever's rocking with me is just part of my team, my individual team. So all those guys are just a part of my team, and they support me, and I support them. And I you're still tight with with everyone that you train with too, like. Because love, love, love is love, and work is work. 
feel me? I got love for everybody at FAA. They come watch me fight. I make it to their fights, you know. Nick is a huge, huge mentor. He, I've been watching Nick since forever. Huge insp- You want to talk about inspiration? Nick is an inspiration. Yeah, people Anime. are looking at you, your, your picture with uh, you, Nick, Justin, Jesse, all, all together right now. It's coming up yeah. on the slide. That's that's a squad. That's a killer squad right there. Justin, he's doing his thing. I got no doubt he's going to fuck it up in the middleweight division. Nick, Nick, if people are sleeping on Nick, I'm telling you, Nick, at 55, especially 55, I, I'm i calling it right. I think Nick could be champion. If if he's if he stays solid and he he keeps this sharp and doesn't let anything else there it is guys he'll he'll be solid you know um, everything everything I got going on is just is just what's going on it's, it works it works for me I think people gotta find out what works for them and the people in my circle are all they all they all want to become better themselves every day and they all challenge me to be better every day see no matter what you're doing whether you know you're, you're saying work is work fun is fun but at the same time when when you're working 40 hours every day somehow you have to turn that into a little bit of fun and i see you doing that with jesse doing like these jumping challenges what's up with that where does this all come from is this something that like one up we to one another what is it we were doing explosive training okay. and like we were working we were working on our legs you know those those excuse me those fast switch muscles and blah 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 and like people like I guess you could say I'm very athletic. Like, I could dunk a basketball. I mean, I played football. Um, I'm 5'9". I could dunk a basketball, right? Yeah, I know. So, I just, I could do backflips. Like, I could just do things that, you know, normal people can't really do. So, sometimes I show it off a little bit, but really, I'm just showing the work. Like, I like I jumped one leg. It was like 55 inches or something like that. One leg hop. It is what it is. We, we always find ways to push ourselves and live on if me and Jesse will run eight miles. Nobody likes running eight miles, so we'll run a course, like a, a a hard a hard course. Or when we're swimming, we're swimming, we're dead tired. I'm like, shit, I'm exhausted. And I crack a joke or something. You know what I mean? It's like, at the end of the day, we're doing what we love to do, which is fight in the process. You got to make the process fun. I find beauty in the struggle, cause not for nothing. Like, I can't speak on anybody else, but where I come from, Waterbury, Connecticut, feel me. Three friends got shot and killed last year. Um, you know, there's, there's shootouts all the time. There's a lot of things, and police officers will tell you, they don't put on the news a lot of things that happen in here because, you know, Holy Land is right there. And, you know, there's a, there's a lot of stuff that goes on in here. There's a lot of killings. There's a lot of murders. There's a lot of, a lot of drugs going on. And as a kid and just seeing things and being involved, like I've been shot at you know, two times, you know, just where I'm at right now, being signed to Bellator and somehow staying focused in the gym is enough to make a movie if we go deep into the past. But I'm, yeah, I'm yeah. not, not going to I'm not gonna go that high yet. It'll all be documented one day. But so... Well, just, one thing people don't understand, Stan, Mike, like when they think of Connecticut, they think of, of all of us as like these rich, spoiled kids. And, and it's not right. Like, I, like my, my listeners know I was the only white kid in my neighborhood. And the other thing about Connecticut, man, I don't know if you can agree with me on this, but... There's not really, like, racial tension. Like, any kind of violence, it's a lot of domestic or a lot of drug violence. You know what I mean? It's not, like, racial yeah. violence. Well, over, feel me, like, there's a lot of, there's a lot of gang violence. Yeah. It's not, it's not whack, like, you know, like, it's not, like, blood and crit, blah, 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 but I ain't even gonna say, say too much, but, you know, there's, 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 there's a lot of gang violence going on, and there's a lot of people that don't get along with a lot of people. There's a lot of people that... I haven't gotten along with, but it's just, it's all about maneuvering, maneuvering, making the right moves in the city and you'll be all right. But that's when they think it's just rich, you know, like West Haven, West Haven's nice areas. There's a lot of nice areas, things like that. But I, if I got, you, if I got in the car right now and I drove down the street, it looks like a third world country in some of these places out here. Like hood the woods in 20 pieces. Yeah. It's have nothing out here. And I, I'm, I'm looking to really, really change, change things for myself, my family. And for my community, because, you know, Ryan Gomes came out of Waterbury, but he, he went to the NBA. He didn't really, he wasn't like a a superstar in the NBA. Like, I'm not in it to say that I'm here. Like, a lot of people, I feel like if they got to my position, they wouldn't shut the fuck up about it. Yeah, I'm a Belgian fighter, blah, blah, blah. Like, no, I'm the same kid. I haven't done anything yet. Like, I'm even when I get that championship belt, I haven't done anything yet. I'm trying to change the whole game. I'm trying to be the face. Coming down I-84, I want you to see that on the billboard. 
Yeah, you know yeah. what? Our, our, like, New Haven represents people. Like, we have a WBC boxing champ uh, from New Haven and stuff like that. Like, yeah. we're proud of our, our athletes. Yeah. You know? Yeah, and it's weird. Like, Connecticut, through the amateurs and stuff like that, and from my gym, I've always been the B side. They always look, they've always looked, looked, you know what I'm saying? Like, looked over or looked down on my gym and looked looked over me. And so I've always been the B side. And I feel like, Taking that with me to the pros is gonna pay. It, it benefits me because nobody's gonna give me nothing. And like a lot of, as much as there should be support, there's a lot of hate. Like there's a lot of people that are like, oh, "Fuck Mike Kimball." Yeah. You know, uh, what do you think about this, Mike? I was kind of talking about it with Jesse. Um, this is some shit I just don't like. Is when, and I think you guys definitely agree. There's a lot of fighters in the scene like on Instagram, Facebook, that post all these photos, and then they drop out of their fights a second. I've, I've been seeing you guys beef about this for a while now. What are your thoughts now that you're here and you have the platform to say something? About? About fighters that just back out last minute. It just happened last week to one of one of my close uh, friends slash fighters. It happens all the time. You know, even yeah. last night on the Ultimate Fighter, we were watching uh, a fight, and, you know, it was a cramp, but it was, like, right before the fight. It was a little fishy. Like... What, what do you think about fighters backing out? And, you know, you, then you see them posting up these photos on, on Facebook or Instagram. And... I mean, the game's full of them. The, I feel like the real are going to survive. The fake are going to, you know, they're going to fall off. I feel like a lot of people want to be a fighter or want to be an MMA fighter because it looks cool. Like, it's something cool. It's something, to, you know, brag about to the girls or, you know, you want to be tough or... Whatever, whatever they feel like, and I feel like some of them, that's that's why they do it. It looks cool to be punching the bag or something. Like all that stuff looks. Yeah, cool. we'll see what happens when that phone gets put down. Yeah. Well, even on the bags, people are trash. But I mean, even and, and and it's like that all the way up until up until the highest level. I feel there's and people just want to be. They just want to be a part of it to say they're there. You know what I mean? There's only few that really, really want to go get it. And I'll tell you what. I got into MMA because I kept getting arrested for getting into fights in school. My mom was like, forget that. So I'm thinking I'm about to go to some karate What's shit. What's wrong with this child? <laughs> so I, I'm, I'm in it because I really like to fight. I enjoy it. I feel free. I don't. I feel like there's no bonds on it. Bonds on me, no no nothing when I go in there. That's what I like to do. Um, I'm a fighter, and now I'm a martial artist. But as for those other guys, I don't know. And you can't really make somebody fight if they don't want to fight. If you don't want to fight, I don't knock nobody for not going to fight. Because at the end of the day, it's dangerous. You know, if you boil it down to the to the root, you're putting your life on the line. So if some people aren't willing to die for it, that's all right. And I respect everybody that steps in the cage because it takes a lot just to step in the cage. You know what I mean? You know, as far as the people that, you know, are posing like, like their fighters, had a couple fights, but do like all that little whole shit. They're just little hoes. That's, that's, <laughs> they're little hoes. They're clowns. What's next for you, man? Because I haven't really heard anything after, you know, Belter 194 went down. Do you have a... What, what's the game plan looking like? My wrist. My wrist. I actually broke my wrist that last fight, and I didn't know it was broken until four weeks after the fight. How? How? Or, Share that I'm just, story. I'm just taping it up. So, that gunshot that you heard in the arena uh, at the Bellator card, February 16th. The only the only thing that landed on Jeffrey from my right hand was my pinky knuckle. I didn't even hit him with the fist. Ooh. Yeah, so I'm thinking it's just going to be sore, you know. So I'm taping my hand up. I'm training like normal. I'm showing up to wrestling class. I'm showing up to spar. And I just had to, you know, be cautious of it. It's still bothering me four weeks later. You know, everybody's bothering me. Go get it checked out. So I get it checked out, and I broke straight through the only thing. Jesus. So I just got the cast off. Um, the bone is healed. It's, it's still, it feels weird because it was out of the cast. Um, so easing back into things, no, no pressure or posting exercises, things like that. Pull-ups and things like that are okay, but I'm getting ready for August. My management is telling me to be ready for August. Um, you know, the guys over at Bellator handle the cars and things like that. They're trying to put something together for August. I don't know where, I don't know what day exactly in August, but I know August. So, 
you know. And granted, when I had my cast on, I was doing things like footwork and legs and core, working on my left side and things like that. So I'm not, I'm not out of shape. I just, that picture I posted today, that's that's from 7 a.m. in the morning. You know what I mean? That's that's me right now. But um, now I'm just I'm just stepping it up. It's just time to step because it's, it's good to coast, but now it's time to step it up. So do you have anyone that that, that you're eyeing up right now for for Bellator because? You know what's the what, what's that look like? I wanna I wanna wipe them all out so there's no doubts. Um, in my opinion, no, fuck my opinion. It's not even my opinion. It's a fact. Everybody in the bantamweight division is a recycled bantamweight. They've all been fighting forever. They all they all fought each other. Once. A jobber, they, like they like to call them. Yeah, they they're just they're just you know. <laughs> Darren, they oh. Joe, Joe fought Joe Warren. Joe Warren fought Don. Hold, um, hold on, Mike. Hold on, Mike. Hold on, Mike. No doubt. My face got, I got a little black and blue. Yo, stop. I'm doing an interview. They would beat my ass last night. Like they stay in step, brother. It's my fucking roommates, bro. I can't wait. I'm, I'm moving to a bigger space tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So really quick, this is like my last, uh, my last interview right here in the space. So you're going to be the last... Last fighter to get this space. Right. But, but like you were saying, man, uh, well, I, I can't even, like, I want to look at the the Bellator top 15 just to see, like, what some of the fighters' records are. Because like we were saying, you're 1-0 right now. So, you know, what were you, what were you saying with the direction that you're heading? You I know, Joe have, Riggs, a lot of jobbers. There's, like, a top five. There's not even really a top 15. Yeah. Like, not, and that, that division has no light no. to it. It, it's, nobody wants to watch that could never be a main event like besides a couple people like uh eduardo dantes and he keep on liking my pictures on instagram like a little girl i don't know what he's doing but i'm coming for him too um darian Cabo, who's the champ who beat eduardo dantes joe warren uh a little no. uh baby joe yeah Juggernaut. the baddest man on the planet no he's not <laughs> but um that's the thing. They, they, those are all. Those are the only guys that could draw, like make real draw. Michael McDonald, I think, is fighting Jordan Dantas in July. Um, if one of those dudes get hurt, i listen. This hand will be healed. Um, what do I got to lose, right? But um, like, there's nothing to it. I personally want. I'm gonna fight again. Whoever they give me, my third fight. I want to fight Joe Warren. Like, I want to fight Joe Warren. He he fought Darren Caldwell. He's fought all those dudes. I want. I want to retire Joe Warren. He's gotta get up out of here. You know they look big on TV, but the reality of it is he's a five. He's a five foot six, sixty four inch reach, you know wrestler, and he's not getting in on me. I think he would take that fight too. I think that would be a, an interesting fight for you to go up and. Yeah, he would. They'll all take the fight because they. Yeah. That they, they'll get me down. They'll beat me up, and they'll they'll get a paycheck. You know what I mean? I want Joe Warren. I want Baby Joe. I, I do, in my opinion, Eduardo Dantes is a da more dangerous fight than Darren Cobwell because Darren Cobwell, he's a relentless, great wrestler. But I'm telling you right now, I've been wrestling. I've been grinding with all Americans over there at Nick, at Nick's. Some of the best wrestling. Ryan Ryan Rowdy, he teach, he's the head coach for um, Amity wrestling team. Nick Newell, he knows what he's doing on the match. He he's a great wrestler. You know what I mean? And these guys are honest with me in preparation. They're like, they wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say I'm ready if I didn't know I was ready. You know what I mean? And neither, and they would laugh at me if I did say I was ready and I wasn't. Um, and over at my gym, we got Casey, who was a, a state champ. And he, Darren Cabo is just a bigger version of Casey. Casey's a 125er undefeated 2-0, um, single leg specialist. You know what I mean? So, I'm ready for war with all of these dudes in the division. I want all the smoke. Like, I'm, I'm I'm here I'm here to put them all out and I'm not here to just grind out a win none of that get a submission if it's there it's there but I'm here to put them out so they don't want to fight again um you know these guys the, and in that division they're all like submission specialists like they they have a little bit of scrap they throw a couple punches back and forth they go to the ground you know what I mean Eduardo Dantes is really the only one who wants to stand and bang um but he's a flat-footed Muay Thai fighter you know that low kick stuff, and you know, he, you know, I sound cocky saying saying these things, but 
I'm just honest with myself in camp, and I'm honest with myself in preparation. Well, it's good I, that you want to challenge yourself, and you're not like, oh, I'm going to take another guy who's who has the same record. You actually want to take on somebody I, I, that's going to get I, you to the next level. That's what I'm saying. Like, and that's another thing about the game. You know, people, even even some of my some of my coaches and stuff, you know, they're like, you know, no, take, you know, fight some cans. Blah, blah, blah. For what? Why am I going to fight cans? I, if that was the case, I should have did that in the amateurs. I'm not... I'm not going to be fighting people that, you know, the people that I fought in my amateur career could beat now as a pro. I'm not going to do that. If, if you think you're the best, you take a challenge every time. So listen, with 1-0 right now, you're coming off that amazing first round finish. You like to finish a lot of fights in the first round. There's no surprise why fans wouldn't get behind you. I don't plan on that. It just happens. It just happens. My cardio is there. I, I put rounds and rounds in at the gym, but... And now that you got, you know, I'm sure that you're working even more on your cardio, too, now that you can't, you know, use your hand, I'm sure your cardio's leveled up a little bit as well. Yeah. Sprints, running, things like that. You know, I, the best... It's different, it's, it's different, though. People people think, you know, running and sprints and swimming and cardio, cardio, cardio will get you better and prepared to fight. Like, to be honest, you got to have the balance. You can't just be in the gym doing round after round and then think you're gonna go into a fight and have the good cardio like and you can't just go running and think that you're gonna go into a fight and be good so it's like the the cardiovascular for the for the sprints and for the for the miles and for the swimming is there but now it's time to put the rounds in i've been putting in the wrestling rounds um i just started yesterday with the wrestling rounds um the jujitsu rounds that's all a different type of exhaustion you know what i mean and i think people get that confused it's it's literally so many factors to the game. Some people only got a couple of the factors down, and that's why they limit themselves. I got all the factors. Last headline question for you, Mike. Of course, Rory McDonald and Gegard Mousasi recently, now they're both holding the title. What are your thoughts on both of them fighting? That's kind of been one of the big Bellator headlines going around. You know, I think they're both pussy, to be honest, because they couldn't get a belt in one organization, so they go to another organization to, you know, to, you know, do the thing. Gegard Musashi, though, I take that back. He's not pussy. He's a savage. I think something just happened. They never him. gave him the title shot, which is yeah, so crazy. And then and he, and you feel me, he, he wasn't treated fairly, so they, boom. But Rory McDonald had his shot. And honestly, I didn't watch the whole fight, but I watched highlights of it. And Lima, the Lima fight you're talking they, about. The champ, you gotta beat the champ. And I don't think he beat the champ. So in my eyes, he shouldn't even be champion. So he's a guy who had his shot at the title, couldn't get it. And then he kind of got it handed to him because he came from a bigger, quote-unquote, a bigger, because at the, right, right, as of right now, that's the biggest organization. He came from the biggest organization. So they did that to hype their own, their own profile. I don't think that it was fair. Mike's just keeping it at 100, man, and that's something that's special about you. That's something I think is going to get you to that next level, speaking your mind, being yourself, and I really want to thank you for joining me here on Pure Evil on my May. And with the summer approaching us, nothing but good vibes coming. Bellator is going to be back here on the East Coast in no time, guys. So make sure you're following Mike Kimball on Instagram, at Kimball Mike, and also on Twitter, at Kimball Mike. Mike, before we let you go, anything that you want to say to your audience, your fans? Um, well... I personally don't think I have fans because, like, you know, that's a whole other topic. I won't even really get into it. I'll just call them supporters. Yeah, like, supporters. Call somebody a fan. It's like, how you call somebody a fan if, you know, they're human like you? Like, you know what I mean? People make fan pages and all this wild stuff. And, like, they think, like, I got one fight as a pro. And, like, a lot of guys over here, they, they start thinking that, you know, fan pages and and, and, and cards and this and that like who the fuck are you what did you do what world championships do you got i'm not a world champion so i therefore i don't got no fans and even when i'm there i'm still a human but um to my supporters and uh the people that rock with me and my friends and family um just shout out shout out them my mom dukes you know my dad my brothers and sisters Tan, uh you know rob beeman nick newell Everybody stay tuned for Nick. Nick's fighting uh I think this shit is June June. Week 25th. six. Yeah, week six. Yeah, him and him and him and um Justin will be Justin. week seven. I call myself I, I fuck with Justin a lot. I call myself Baby Fort. <laughs> <laughs> Baby so, Fort. 
though. Shout out them. Shout out FAA, all those dogs over there. Trifecta, Kenny Kwan. Uh, Mike Ian. Rodriguez, I know you train with Mike too. Rodriguez, big boy. Um, Calling Big Mike, Petros, you know, Jarrell, Kobe, Cody, um, fucking Jack, Mau Mau, Moses, all those dudes up there. Just It's hard to, it's hard to say because, for me, I'm not one that likes to put out big, big speeches or big things. Like, you know, you know how I'm rocking. I know who's rocking with me. They know how I rock for them. Yeah, but for the listeners, just so they know, you know what I mean? It helps them kind of understand, yeah. feel, kind of get a feel. You know what I mean? FAA. Shout out um, Jesse James Kozakowski. That's my bro. War dog. Um, PSTTC. Uh, Ron Kozakowski. Obviously, Team Thunder MMA. Daniel Samura. I couldn't do anything without him. That's my head gym. Um, did I say Trifecta? I don't know. But shout out Trifecta. Uh, shout out... Lil Yachty? <laughs> Fuck those guys. He's trash. I'll shout out Meek, though. Shout out Drake. I'll even shout out 6 9 before Lil Yachty. 6 9 got bangers. Yeah, my, la- my last question, man. What's going to be your next walkout song? Final final question. Uh, it matters It matters how you feel, right? Yeah, it depends on what comes out at the time or just what I'm rocking, how I'm feeling. Because I'm, I'm, a, I'm a deep thinker and I'm a deep listener. I actually read a lot, too. And, and I get very... I look at things on a deeper level than, than just the eye. So it depends on how I'm feeling and what the, what the music is like. Um, I don't even know. Something Here, let's like- get personal. Let's get personal. Uh, I want you, as soon as we hang up, or at some point before the night's over, to send me one of your favorite songs right now, so I could put it down below for our listeners to uh, to check out what's uh, what's getting you hyped for uh, working out and stuff. Uh, I'm I'm different though. Like I, I like I like music that has things to do with like I don't know, like chilling. And like girls, like something I gotta do with girls. Like I like listening about girls, cause people, you know, women rule the world. So that that motivates you, like you know what I mean. And just let people know that are watching the video cast that picture next to Mike is actually his little sister. It's not his girl. Yeah, that's my sister. So don't get that fucked up. And watch out because she, <laughs> you don't you don't want to fuck with a fighter's sister I'll throw this <laughs> or a daughter. I throw I throw the whole game, this whole I mean, I'll throw it all away. It could it like that it doesn't matter um but yeah uh oh you know what shout out um major so out of new york uh my boy my boy's cousin out of new york he just dropped a song that went on 95.7 or 95 oh, 97 yeah. 97 one yeah yeah um it's called it's called the ride by major so that shit is heat i'm bumping i, I bump it 10 times a day send it to like, me i'll support it i'll drop it down below here on the youtube and itunes channel all right Gotcha. He's gonna have to drop me some bread for this, though. <laughs> Mike, thank you so much for joining me on Pure Evil MMA. It's been a long time coming, brother, and I can't wait to see you back inside that cage, brother. Oh, I forgot. I can't forget because this is one of the best teams in the world. Shout out Paradigm Sports Management. Shout out Tim. Shout out Audie. Those dudes, they keep me. They keep me sharp up here. They make sure that they check up on me. Like you, you got a lot of money hungry people, and I tell you what, they're not. They're not in it for the money, they're in it. Well, obviously the money's gonna come, but because they believe, if they believe in you, they believe in you. They check up on me, they've been checking up on me my whole hand, Tim's FaceTiming me every other week. Nice. So, so shout out them, they're really on the ball. Um, which, fuck, means a, which means a lot, yeah. Uh, but yeah, so shout out them, shout out you. Cause this is a good podcast, you, you've interviewed a lot of good dope fighters, you know, um, I respect what you do. I appreciate it, Mike. I, and shit like that. It's pretty dope. We oh, got, yeah. I have a sit down one. You know what I'm saying? Oh yeah. Soon coming. Soon coming. All right, man. Before we let you go, just say your name and you're listening to Pure Evil MMA. All right. This is Mike the Savage Kimball from the 203, and you're listening to Pure Evil MMA. Thanks, Mike. Have a good one, brother. Sir. Sure.